CNN military analyst Colonel Cedric Layton is joining us. Colonel, what's your take on this reporting that Russia is withdrawing forces around Kyiv as part of a major strategy shift? Well, Anna, let, color me skeptical at this particular point. So, uh, you know, if you look at what's going on here, uh, the Russians are, are, you know, obviously around Kyiv, but we also have significant Ukrainian uh, areas that uh, are just starting to show up on our maps. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in detail. Uh, but what you're seeing also is the possibility that the Russians are going to be moving their forces around to other areas of the country. And we can't forget about what's happening down here in the south because, in effect, Ukraine is actually in, undergoing a blockade. And that is uh, a major issue uh, you know, from, uh, you know, from a standpoint of uh, economics as well as, of course, resupplying from a military standpoint. Russia saying now its primary focus is, quote, the liberation of Donbass. And we talked about where that is and its significance with Jim earlier. But what would you expect in terms of the change in this battle on the ground? So in terms of the battle on the ground, what could happen in this case, Anna, is what we will see here is instead of going around Kiev, we may see more emphasis in this area right here. The Russians have occupied this part right here, but they haven't occupied these areas right in here be, uh, beyond uh, the line of demarcation that they've been observing since 2014. So they could move forces in this way. Uh, this is Mariupol, uh, that apocalyptic area that you just talked about. Uh, and then, of course, you have the Crimea and you have have the areas that they've occupied coming out from Crimea. So this is an area where things have also stalled out for them, though. So if they do that, if they move forces from, let's say, up here and bring them down this way, uh, that is a possibility. But uh, it uh, remains to be seen if they're actually going to follow through with that or if this is just a pause in their uh, efforts to go after uh, Kyiv. And that, I think, still remains its main Russia's main strategic goal. And that, I think, is going to be a critical uh, juncture for us in in the next uh, next few days and, so, and weeks. So just to be clear, do you think Kiev is in the clear at this point? I do not. Uh, this is uh, how we see Kiev at, at the moment. Now it's you know, we have uh, seen some major uh, developments here around Irpin. Uh, they say that Irpin is now in Ukrainian hands, more or less. Uh, we also have a significant Ukrainian force here to the east of Kiev, uh, which has the possibility of cutting off the Russians this way. Uh, but by no means does this mean that uh, Kiev is in the clear, because the Russians are using artillery, both medium range and long range artillery to pummel Kyiv and we've had reports from people on the ground there saying that they are still getting a lot of shelling. Uh, there are also our aerial attacks that are being mounted in the region so by no means is this a let up at all and we have to be very careful believing uh, what the Russians are telling us uh, either from their folks in Moscow or from their diplomats uh, negotiating with the Ukrainians in Turkey. Right. And Ukrainian officials actually said not only have they made, you know, progress around Kiev, but that they're actually clawing back territory in the southern part of that country as well with the Russian forces retreating from Kiev. Does that now free up Ukrainian troops to move toward the south? So could they kind of reinforce their own support down there? They have to be very careful, Anna, if they're going to do something like that. Yes, it's possible if the Russians are actually stopping their movements on Kyiv, but I don't think they really are. But, you know, that's something that we'll have to see. That's where uh, the tactical intelligence picture is going to become an absolute key in determining what the re Ukrainians do next. Uh, but what you see here in the southern part, of course, you've got Mariupol, uh, which we've just talked about. That area is basically gone for the Ukrainians, at the very least in terms of the infrastructure that's left there. Around Kherson, uh, we have reports of Ukrainians moving in uh, and taking over parts of, of that area, but again, it's, it's still contested. Mykolaiv, on the other hand, uh, seems to be faring better from a Ukrainian standpoint. And of course, what the Ukrainians want to do is they want to keep this. They want to keep Odessa because Odessa is their port city, the third largest city in the country, and an economic lifeline for them. So these are all key elements in the Ukrainian strategy. If they can, they will try to reinforce Odessa and try to move down this way and try to box the Russians in uh, down here and bring them back to a line uh, basically like this where they're close to the Crimean line that they had earlier. All right, thank you so much, Colonel Layton. Good to have you here. So Ben, back with us now. Let's talk about the strikes that continue there. More people were killed there. What, what can you tell us? 
What I can tell you, Don, is that at 8.45 this morning, local time, uh, this sh city was shaken uh, by a large blast, a Russian airstrike on the regional governor's headquarters, in fact, very much on his office itself. Now, if we went to the scene of the blast, and it really was something reminiscent from the shock and awe campaign of the United States, according to local officials at this point, and this is new, uh, the death toll from that strike was thir nine people, or excuse me, 12 people, uh, 33 people wounded. Now, the governor himself apparently was sleeping late, and that's why he was not at uh, the, his office uh, at the time. But this, this, his office is literally right in the middle of this city. It seems to have been a precision uh, strike, but what happened was that windows in all the surrounding buildings uh, shattered. Don? Uh, ben Wiedemann, thank you very much. We'll check back in with Ben. Uh, I want to hone in now on what's happening in Mariupol. We have new images. Uh, take, take a look at this apartment building. It has been reduced to a shell of itself, its former self, after an attack. Officials say 90% of the residential buildings in the city have either been damaged or outright just demolished, just destroyed by the Russian attacks. CNN's international correspondent Phil Black is live here with me in Lviv to talk about that. Um, Phil, Russia is now focusing on shifting to southern Ukraine. Is there much hope left for Mariupol? It doesn't seem to be done, no. I mean, you can see the scale of the damage there. The extent of it is extraordinary. There is so little of the city left. Uh, and uh, what we understand is that the, the pro-Russian fighters in that city uh, are making progress day by day by day. The Ukrainians say that their forces, what's left of them, are still defending, they call it a circular defense. It's circular because they're surrounded, as they have been for some time. Mm -hmm. But the territory they are defending gets a little smaller every day. So it, it does seem that there's a sense of inevitability to this. It's very difficult to see how the fall of Mariupol can be prevented. Yeah. You have covered uh, Moscow for a very long time. Why is Mariupol, why is the strategy here so significant, so strategically important for Putin? Ever since Russia annexed the Crimean Peninsula back in 2014, there has been speculation that Russia would launch a, a, an operation to charge down the coast of the Sea of Azov from its southern border in order to create this land corridor connecting the border of the Russian Federation to the Crimean Peninsula because mm -hmm. up until now they have set separate from one another, connected over a bridge that has been built recently, but, that, but that's it. And, and so in that sense, I think the expectation is, is that seizing and maintaining that land corridor is one of the bare minimum military goals of Putin and Russia in this campaign. And they've established it so far, except for one piece. The only missing piece so far is Mariupol. And we have shown, as we've covered this for some weeks now, what they have been prepared to do in order to capture this city, and that is turn it to rubble. Demolish it. Just yeah. rubble. It's sad. More, the more pictures we see, the worse it gets. Every single day. Mariupol is worse. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Phil Black. I appreciate it.